to. Hello, folks. Old Buster coming to you again. Appreciate y'all dropping in. Listen to the stories. We got another one for you. We got just a few more of the kind of a shorter ones until we get on into the longer ones uh, later on in the boys' lives. But uh, we still got a little ways to go yet. Name of this old story is called Friends. Well, Buster and the boys met over to Hire's place, and Alma May was a cooking up something for him good to eat. Well, whilst the boys was a palavering, Buster was a eating Hire and Alma May out of house and home. He had him a dozen fried eggs and two bacon and grape jelly sandwiches, along with two of them BLTs that was Alma May's specialty. Of course, that took two pounds of bacon for him alone. Biscuits and milk gravy and a half gallon of sweet milk and a half a gallon of chocolate milk topped it all off for him. Well, after all the eating was done, the boys got to talking about all their business and the folks uh, working with them. Buster told an old wish, that's Ishmael Maldonado, which done all the Spanish talking for the Mexican men that worked with Buster and got his himself in a pickle. Well, now I want you to understand, we done been through this once. But this is where it really all started. Seems the boy was driving back in from working on his and air condition played out on him and he had to roll down his window, being as hot as it was. Near about a hundred, he said. Ish was a sigh following along when a hornet flew in his and window and crawled up into his and ear. Kinda like Ferguson's, I guess. When on uh, they were looking at hired invention. A little different kind of hornet though. Well, that hornet done wore out old Ish, I tell you. Boys, Ish couldn't get that hornet out of his ear, and he was a-stinging him some fierce, said he was a-harming him. Ish was all over the road, and it was a wonder he didn't have no wreck. Ish finally pulled up to a clinic and run inside just to holler to get that darn hornet out of his ear. It was a-biting him something awful. The doctor and nurse come a running and got old Ish down on the table and began to extract the that there hornet out of Ish's ear with it a buzzing and a stinging old Ish to beat the band. Oh, that boy. Finally, the doc got the hornet out of Ish's ear and his and hate swole up like a toad frog. It was big as a basketball. Well, Ish asked the doc if that hornet was dead or not because if he wasn't, he was going to kill the darn thing. Well, ever since then, old Ish won't ride no kind of automobile less than the windows all rolled up and the air conditioning running. Ish says he still hears that horn and the bu buzzing in his ear. He won't eat nothing green on top of that. That boy's a mess, I ain't lying. Now, you know I got a story to tell on him. It's not in this story, but I'm going to tell one on that boy. True story. Well, he's out there doing some work. Sad to stay at this little motel. Well, now, old Ish, he's bad about ironing his clothes. He's got to iron his T-shirt, his polo shirt, his blue jeans, his underdrawers, anything he's got to iron them. Well, we stopped at this motel, and there's a real nice lady, the Indian lady there that run it. They owned a little place. And he told them he wanted to iron. She said, well, I ain't got to iron to work it. He said, I got to have an iron, and he just beleaguered that poor lady and just pestered her till she went and got that old iron. Well, he got in there at the bed. We had two beds in the room, you know. It's an old motel. And he was laying up there like an old fat hog in the sunshine. Well, old Buster asked me to come along. I said, I'll fix him really good. I'll belly flop him. Well, I belly flopped him right there. <laughs> and the head of the bed broke down and the side did and he come off at an angle. And he was laying there all messed up just a squealing like a pig under a gate. Well, he decided he was going to sleep in my bed. I said, no, I'm paying for this room. <laughs> you go out to sleep on that bed. So he slept crossways all night. <laughs> I had to devil the boy something fierce. He needed it. He, he he needs it, I'm telling you. But he's a good fella. He takes a good joke. But anyhow, on back about that ironing them clothes, well, the next morning we had to get on out there to work early. Well, you know, it, you burn in daylight. They, they don't wait on you. Well, I got to iron my shirt and my britches and things. I said, well, you burning daylight, boy. You're going to get left. I said, I'm leaving you. So I got in the truck and I started out. And him a running with shirt and ironing out. Trying to catch up with the truck. Well, he jumps in the truck a matter of the way he had it. Just a whooping on and tussling with me. 
that boy, he's a mess now. I'm telling you. But he's a good one. He'd do to ride the river with. Anyway, back to the story. I just had to tell you that on him. He, and he knows it too. He knows who he is if he'd ever listened. I blame everything on him when he knocked my teeth out there in Mexico. He didn't mean to, but going through them dadgum dry stream beds, that little old elbow of his, Lord have mercy, he had a piece of shrapnel in the darn thing, and it come out at that when he then broke that dadgum tooth off in there. Loosened the other. That boy, he didn't hurt me. Well, anyhow, Buster told the boys that Big Mike Young called him up. Now, Big Mike, you know, he just close to the boys, I'm telling you, good feller. Hired said it had been a right smart spell since they had heard from him and asked if and how he was doing. Well, glad you asked, said Buster. This is what all he done told me. Well, Big Mike said he was a riding a gelding on a hunt up Idaho way, and that gelding he was a riding stumbled and stepped off the edge of a four foot drop off. He said the horse stepped in the middle of his and back and dislocated his and shoulder and cracked three ribs. He got laid up for a spell, but got to doing better before the fall hunt of the elk. Well, Big Mike said he had an outfitter and a guide to take him and a feller he knowed from California to the headwaters of the Green River up in Wyoming in the Bridger National Forest to get him a trophy elk. He'd hunted everything in North America. He'd got every kind of head on the wall. But everybody says all these things, but he's also a very much a con uh, conservationist when it comes to critters. But he eats them too. Or at least why something to eat. That, uh, that's what I was going to say. He's going to get him an elk, something to eat, or get him a trophy. The green wasn't no more than three foot wide where a body could step across it where they was at. Well, Big Mike said it got to snowing right smart after they got on the trail, and the trail wasn't no more than eight to ten inches wide, with five to six inches of snow on the ground. And of course, y'all know that a horse don't walk like a man, and it didn't appear to be a problem for the horses to talk. Well, they was a riding long, hated to camp towards the lake at the bottom of the mountain when things got a mite twitchy. The first two horses with the guide and the other feller, Don, stepped over a rock in the trail, but not the bear that Big Mike was a riding. It was a flat rock and kind of tilted up a mite. His and Mary stepped on the rock with her right inside foot and took her whole front end off the edge of that doggone cliff. Well, Big Mike see they was a going over and bailed off his and married fair near about oh, 18 foot and landed on some rocks down there. Well, the mare went head over heels all the way down the cliff about 400 foot, believe it or not, to the lake. She made about six loops before she hit the bottom. Seeing as it was near about dark, dark now, Big Mike crawled his himself back up the trail when the other boys come back when they seen what all happened. The guide went on down after the horse, expecting the worst, but lo and behold, she was just gone up on her knees and legs about. That's all. Well, they was all scared plumb to death about Mike and the horse, but the guide got her up to her feet and led her on down the side of to the lake uh, to where the trail met up with the lake so they could meet up with Big Mike and Don. Well, Big Mike said his and saddlebags was still on the mare, along with his and Remington 730-06 and not a scratch on the thing. Now that mare was a mite skittish after her fall, but Big Mike uh, got up on her and she led him and he said he was suffering a plenty. All of them went on into camp and Big Mike laid up the next day and then went on hunting for six more days after that. Being as it was about 10 miles to the trailer and 15 miles to town, they didn't want to give up on the hunt. Well, Big Mike said it sure was a joke to shoot in that dadgum 30 alt 6 and he just about had all he wanted of it. Well, Big Mike got back into town and went to see the doctor. He had broke four ribs. That x-ray lady said the brakes were right under the three she had x-rayed before. <laughs> What's he been a-doing? Oh, man. So he had been laid up till now, and he said he was okay, but a mite tender, and that's why we ain't heard from the boy. Well, the hired piped up and said it reminded him when Buster, of course now you know that's me, was riding in the sand dunes in Winoka, Oklahoma, and got thrown off his four-wheeler over a 20-foot cliff. Well, now wait a minute now, it wasn't my four-wheeler, it's hired's. Well, Buster laid up for five weeks where he couldn't get in, out, or turn over in bed. 
Lulu told Buster he had to get him one of them highfalutin turtles because she wasn't going to do for him acting crazy like he done. Well, Buster hollered out that that was enough of that now. Well, all the boys sure barely belly laughed at that, I tell you. Well, Buster told Hire not to get so uppity now. He said he remembered when he was riding that motorcycle of his and it took a jump and knocked out his and teeth and broke his and collarbone. His and folks had to <laughs> go out and find his teeth and get to the dentist and have him put back in. Well, he don't ride crazy like that no more, but he's a rider. Well, old Walter just guff off. And now, hold on now, says Hired. What about that time when you fell in the dark at old George Freeman's junk pile? By the grace of the good Lord, it didn't scare your gizzard. Uh-huh. But you bunged up your knee and laid there pretty bad off for a spell, though doing that there Chinese mumbo-jumbo you have done. And then the time Buster's four-wheeler you was a-riding flipped over on you going downhill and it dislocated your shoulder and cracked some ribs. You wasn't a-laughing with then, was you? Especially when Lou Ann come up a-giving you what fur, poking on you. Well, back to telling the news of the friends. Old Bill Kimmel give me a call, said Buster. He got to telling about when he was a-riding bulls for four years for Kansas State. Him and his and rodeo buddy was at a rodeo that was going to be his and Lance last since him and Nicky was getting hitched up. Well, there was this old bull that Bill had seen rode, and his and friend drew him to ride him that night. Well, Bill told him he had them figured out, and he'd see that bull being rode before, and to ride him to the bell, feller would have to get his and hay turned from the gate and sit down tight as he could. When that bull come out the gate, then you settle in and ride him said Bill. Well, Bill's friend rode that bull for the eight seconds and won. The owner of the bull rodeo stock sure had a bone to pick with Bill since he didn't want his and bull rode and swore he would get him for telling how to ride that bull. There was one more rodeo before Bill got married up to his gal Nikki, and she signed Bill up for it. Bill told her he was done but she just had to have him ride one more time cause she was a barrel racer that night too. Well, the feller that furnished the stock got uh, for the rodeo got there and seen it was Bill there and uh, swore he'd get the one he swore to get old Bill for outsmarting him on his and bull. Well, when Bill drawed his and bull to ride, it come to be the rankest, meanest, biggest bull they ever saw. Meaner than snake. Bill settled in on that old bull and rode him on to open the gate. That thing was a bucking in there and he was hanging on. Now that bull was a handful, I tell you. Well, Bill rode him for a spell and then got bucked off and the bull stepped on Bill in the back with his and front feet. Now you know that just had to hurt. Bill was a doing all he could to get away, but there wasn't a rodeo clown in sight to help. As Bill was a scrambling to the fence, the bull caught him in the back with his and back hooves and was hay butted to boot. Bill was sure in a pickle, I tell you. Well, old Bill finally got out of the arena and found out uh, the stock provider told the clowns to stay put and not to help Bill. Now, it's true, folks. Well, Bill hollered for Dickie and her sister to come on. They got in his and pickup and headed for home. Well, when they got there, Bill couldn't get out of his and pickup because he was stuck to the seat. The bull had took all the hide off of Bill's back and the blood had dried and set up and stuck Bill right proper to his seat of his pickup truck. The gals had to get warm water to get him a loose. That was the last time Bill ever rode a bull. And you gotta know Bill Kimmel is a real life cowboy. There ain't no quit in him, there ain't nobody no tougher. Bad thing is Bill got married up the next week. Well, he was snowed in on the ranch where he was working for a month in an old boxcar. That's where he honeymooned and couldn't get back to town. Well, reckon that rodeo stock supplier found some whoopings come cheap in cow country after the fall. I'm here to tell you. Now, all this time, Jesse ain't said a word or nary a peep out of him. Finally, Jesse looked up and said, well, boys, at least y'all ain't never brung home a gal to meet the family and your ma's dog run up to her and killed over date. Ha! Well, all the boys were just shaking their heads as they left on out to home when Alma May turned to them and exclaimed, Nuff said! Well, 
don't know if that's enough said or not because Jesse's ma had him and his pa where they buried the old dog dig him up to see if he's still alive she's all worried about him or not well they had to cover him back up but anyhow that was a hard day for her his mom and she was a sweet lady to come and a Christian lady well that's kind of some of the things that goes on with the boys and their friends and you know there's a lot of good things in life but there's things that come about too and they all stick together and they all been blessed by the Lord it's old Buster signing out y'all have a blessed day